five, dropping by the minute. Uh, are the men going to struggle around? It's quite interesting that it's a difficult one for the wax men. Obviously, the relay was held at this time yesterday, but it has been quite testing for the, the wax technicians because there's no point in them testing in the sunshine we had earlier when this race is now going to kick off. I see it's dropping even further. It's nearly six minus six at the moment. So continually, the temperature gauge is dropping down. I'm sure they've got it sussed. Well, we'll see. It could uh, be one team that comes through, but the very fact that they all start together makes it very difficult to break away. And that's what Landertinger was suggesting earlier on, Mike, is you know no one's going to get away, so you might as well tuck in behind and just get a free ride on the first lap, maybe even the second and third. Maybe, but the tension, the sturdy of the best, the skiing doesn't vary more than, what, one minute 45 between these 30. And uh, it's going to be a vicious battle, I think, out there, and, and very tense if you're in the middle of the pack. Number two is Martin Foucard. Is he going to make it gold medal number two? He won the pursuit in fantastic style. I think, for me, he's the fastest man out there. If he's got the form that he's shown over the last week or so, has he got the nerve for this one? He's got the desire, and, and I think he has the nerve. We have seen uh, Martin Foucard lose it on the last shoot, though, too many times. Lukas Hoffer finished eighth in the mass start in Fort Kent, the last. Otherwise, he hasn't really been on form. This isn't his sort of discipline. 28-year-old Michael Schlesinger, good to see him on the front row. Eighth, twelfth and tenth, his three results. Ivan Sherazov had a really good relay, brought the crowd to life with his shooting performance. Mickey Grice, well, it was a disaster in the relay, and he says it will not affect him. That remains to be seen. Christoph Suman wears number six. The bronze medal from the individual at 35. He knows exactly how to play this one. Maxim Maximov, two silvers so far. He has the complete haul of Russian medals. Can he turn it into gold? Svensson. Second place in the overall World Cup standings and a man who came here to take an individual gold. He has failed so far. This is his last chance. And this is a man who might deny him five races, five medals, three of them gold. It is unbelievable what he's achieved this year. The fastest man over the snow. If he puts together 18 or 19 hits out of the 20, it could be Martin Foucault who walks away with the gold. But Arndt Pfeiffer, well, he took the gold in the sprint, and if you can do that, you can certainly win the mass start. So the whole of the front row have the potential to take the victory. And then, of course, there's Ole Einar Bjorndalen. The clock is ticking, the countdown has started. They're just trying to make sure that everyone is behind the line. A good start, essential. And a clean start. We don't need any more broken poles. Well, you can see how eager they are to get away. The starter needs to be so disciplined here as well to keep it level. They try again. Well, the second time of asking, they get away. There was hesitation, but the yellow bib of Svensson said, I'm off, and then everyone just chased him down. Now, if you do, uh, a lot of our viewers, Mike, will be into loppet races, the long-distance races, and, it, and if you jump the gun at about 150 metres, they pull a, pull a massive great <laughs> rope across the line just so no one has any smart ideas. Well, these are not doing that here. It could get tangled up in the rifles, but no, absolutely nervous moments, and you need, you need a starter who is very... Very, very clear about what is about to happen. Give them a 10-second warning, five-second warning, and then the gun releases them. Now, Mike, uh, we've, we've been through the favourites, but if we look further down the list, those who we haven't mentioned so far, if you go on to the second grid, Ber Bergman of Sweden, very quick, looked good in the relay, could do something. Only Ina Bjorndalen wearing bid number 12. Now, Bjorndalen has a whopping 14 victories in the mass start discipline. 
I don't think he'd say he was quite as good as uh, Raphael Poiret was at this discipline, but on the start sheet, he's got 40. No, I can't find anyone else who has more than two mass start wins. Yeah, that, that's about the size of the achievements that uh, Bjorn Dahlen has, has created over so many years now, 17 years on the World Cup Tour. And what does Oleana have to do today to win this one? He's got to feel good about what happened yesterday. The relay he put in the perfect race, no spare rounds. He was one of only two people in the relay from 26 nations to hit five out of five, rapid fire both times to hand over in first place. There is Bjorn Dahlen with the white hat uh, and a blue and red stripe of the Norwegian colors on his hat. He's wearing bib number 12, Simon Ada wearing 13, Andy Bernback of Germany wearing 14. He needs to be better on the prone shooting than he was in the relay yesterday. Bjorn Ferry of Sweden, 15, of course, the uh, a man who's taken a couple of good titles in his career and a few World Cup wins, so you can't rule him out. The Russians, well, Maximov, Sherazov, Ustigov, all entitled to race, and Maxim Shudov gets himself in as number 30. The Russians are very lucky. They're the only nation that have five starters on this grid to date. With uh, Makovev, Ustigov, Sherazov, Maximov and Shudov. Well, that gives them, uh, I guess, uh, more of a chance. Five of the 30. It's a pedestrian pace, which is causing a little bit of bother further down the order. And you certainly don't want to be in the middle of that mass because you just can't ski freely. That's interesting. Terry Bow in yellow, he's been so keen to keep it slow and uh, they respected him behind. But uh, Martin Foucault is, is twitching. He's nervous in there. I now think it's a little slow for him. Well, while they're on this first lap, Mike, of course, uh, the distance three kilometres, each lap three kilometres, five times round to make up the 15k. What about Mickey Grice? Uh, a disaster in the relay yesterday. He alone threw away Germany's chance of winning the relay, and uh, he missed six targets. He was saying to uh, the press officer in the German team, I can't remember the last time I missed three, let alone six. It, it was unusual. I think what happened, though, he'll, later on he would have thought it through, and he really did try to stay with the rocket pace of Terry Abo, and that was a good strategy. I think it was his only strategy to to chase the gold, not just defend the silver. And he put all his money out, all the table. He's not in great shape at the moment skiing. And he came into the range way over his comfort zone. And I think that's what cost Mickey Grice uh, all those misses in the stand position. Yeah, he Sorry, was the prone position. In the, in the prone, it, it's slightly ironic because he was saying uh, after the race that he wouldn't have done anything different if he raced it again. He stayed with Bo because he thought the only point of the race he could put Bo under pressure was in the prone shoot, and he wanted to be alongside him, breathing down his neck. As it turned out, Bo absolutely fell apart in the standing shoot, and so uh, Mickey Grice, in hindsight, might have done uh, done it the other way around. But but I think the young, almost the youngest in the field, Terry Bo, he's got such a good strategy, such a good mind, and that's why he's wanting to keep it slow because he knows that he can destroy the pace later, and he clearly made that conscious decision. I am going to go as fast as I can to hurt anyone that's near me and, and that is exactly what he did to the German team in the relay. Now someone we haven't mentioned yet Mike is the great and unreliable Lars Berger. Uh, so, so pleased to see Lars Berger in there, bib 25 and you never know, you never know a Lars Berger, I would love it to be his day today. He has taken the silver medal in this race back in 2004 in Oberhof when the world champs went there. Look what's happening now, Bauer's had enough of slow pace. Yeah, Clement Bauer has turned it up and uh, he knows that his strong point is his skiing. It's certainly not been his shooting over the years, but he does put in one or two brilliant performances. So I think Bauer fancies his chances, but he doesn't fancy his chances if he takes it slow. Looks as though Christoph Stefan has fallen right away for Germany already. He started number 21. I he's wonder whether he's just saying, I, I want to save as much for laps two through to five as possible. That's very strange. I, I don't know why he's doing that, but I'll tell you what, look at Clement Bauer to move from BIP 29. He was almost last place on the grid, and he's at the front. Well, that might have been the explanation for Stefan's slow start. He knows exactly what happens when you're in a tight group like this. A few words, was that Schlesinger that, and Grice? That, that was words? Grice saying something to Schlesinger there. He wasn't happy at all. Grice not looking comfortable in the pack. Yeah, look how tight it is here. Uh, <laughs> they need to do a bit of road cycling to learn the, the rules of the road. They're not used to racing in close quarters like this. And the track's perhaps not quite as wide as they could be.
I think the two Italians at the back, Christian De Lorenzi and Marcus Findish, are really relishing this because they, they've realised what the situation is. They've seen Large Berger and Svensson and Bo all having to shorten their stride just to stay with the pace. Everyone looking uncomfortable in the mix. If you're out the back like Christoph Stefan, you're having a, a Sunday stroll. I think he's the wisest man in this pack, Stefan, at the back. He knows he can't push through, so just keep his own level pace rather than the stop-start scenario that's happening when you're trying to stay right behind the guy in front. Yeah, what about a mention for the Americans? Great to see that Life Nordrum has qualified. Oh, he's, he's doing so well. His skiing is maybe a minute 40 off the fastest over this distance, a minute 30, but it's shooting unbelievably well. And if he hits 20 today, he could well get the America's first medal at these championships. Well, it's Clement Bauer who leads the way into the stadium, a man who has done five races so far. This is number six. He finished 15th in the sprint, which was a really good effort, and that was missing two targets. His shooting in the pursuit was disastrous. He missed a total of eight, and then in the individual, he missed five. So uh, you can see from that, the skiing is undoubtedly world-class, but shooting-wise, he's inconsistent. Very inconsistent. We saw that in the relay yesterday. Clement Bauer one of the fastest skiers, but it, he went on the penalty loop. There is Bauer, settles in lane number 29. He should be the first to strike. I mean, he could clear all five before uh, Al Pfeiffer in lane one <laughs> even gets one away. Martin Foucard goes on two, Terry Bow on three, Svensson four. Number five is Maximov, Christoph Suman number six for Austria, and Mickey Gry seven. Bjorn Dahlen is away for Norway, down in lane number 12. Three out of three. Can he keep the focus? No, an early miss from Bjorn Dahlen. Svensson, three out of three. Maximoff, three out of three. Has anyone hit all five? Yes, Hoffa and Bergman both go clear. And a cheer going up, which must mean that Sherazov has gone five with five. He has. It's oh, very good. I can't believe Michael Schlesinger. I felt good about him today. He missed three. Arndt Pfeiffer has missed two. That is a disaster, but Mickey Grice, after all yesterday's antics, has gone and cleared the lot. Fantastic, and he's just said to anyone that ever dreamt of criticising him that, no, I'm here, I'm here to stay, I can still keep this thing together. But uh, some surprising shoots there for me, Patrick. There's only 14 have hit five out of five, 14 of the best biathletes in the world. I'm amazed Stefan missed one there. I thought his strategy was perfect to come in quietly at the back of the field. Three pursuits so far this season, or three mass starts, I should say, and no one has won with more than two misses. 18 out of 20 for Terry Bow in Oberhof. He still managed to get the win. Difficult conditions there. Since then, Martin Foucault has won both, and they were both with scores of 19 out of 20. So how many are clear at the moment? Yes, we have a full 14 that have hit the five out of five, and here they are. Look at the advantage of hitting the targets. And amongst those, the two Foucault brothers are there. I know one of our regular contributors to our email uh, box, uh, Yvonne in London, will be delighted with that. And uh, I can tell you that Svensson has gone clear, Hoffer is clear, and Suman is there as well. Welcome back. Uh, just to uh, clarify, 14 men shooting the perfect score on the first shoot in this mass start. And most of the big names are there. Ole Einem Bjorndalen has missed one. Uh, <laughs> Mike putting a little bit of money on Michael Schlesinger of the Czech Republic. Now, what's happened to him? It looks like a disaster. He had a, the most terrible start he could ever have dreamt of. He looks, he, uh, he's in good form, but nope, came in obviously not comfortable. In fairness, the flags on the left side of range are uh, moving from right to left. The flags on the right side of the range from left to right. So slight uh, change there. And I think that's on why we saw only 14 of the best hitting five out of five. A little tricky wind change there as the temperatures drop. Only 10 of the top 30 hitting all five on the first shoot of the women's mass start. So the men lead on that count at the moment. But it was really the second shoot in the prone position that broke the field up in the women's race. Will it be the same? The pace has almost doubled with Martin Foucault out front. Lukas Hoffer on his heels. So it would be a great delight to see Lukas challenging all the way through to the last shoot today. Svensson in third at the moment. You'll see the time margins. They're pretty insignificant. Suman is there and looking dangerous Mickey Grice in fifth much better than his relay yesterday and of course uh, Terry Bow as ever is present in the leading group Mike 
22 races we've had this year already, and Terry Bo has been on the podium in, well, on the top five, I should say, in all but three. That's, that is, in fact, I think even in Ole Einer's uh, best ever season, I'm not sure his statistics were that good. I think that's as good as it's ever been in biathlon, and Terry Bo has got it all. He's got the ski speed, he's got the mind that copes with pressure, and the beautiful technical skills, but he did struggle yesterday.